I decided that I was going to put my battery bank on wheels so that I could roll it around the garage easily. It's going to weigh around a thousand pounds, so it's kind of nice to have it mobile. I prefer it in my basement, but I can't put my generator set up in my basement, so I'm just going to put it in my garage on wheels so I can roll it around, get it out of the way, put it where I want it. And I just got a package in the mail. I decided to mail order these. It was less expensive to get what I needed uh, through the mail than from a local supplier, so I did that. So let's open this box and see what I got. I don't actually know what's in this box yet. I just suspect it's what I think it is. And we're going to find out. If it's not, well, then you probably wouldn't be watching this. And it is. I needed wheels. So I bought these. And if this is the first time I've taken a look at them, they look to be pretty decent quality wheels, really. So I was going to put this on a platform so that I could wheel it around, and I needed some casters, swivel casters with the top plate like this, so that I could, uh, well, mount them to it to roll it around. And when it comes to casters, there are so many different types that it's not worth mentioning them all, but they come from everything from uh, cast iron steel, which is like what you'd find in a trolley jack. Um, those certainly have some advantages, but it's really not appropriate for this sort of thing. Uh, all the way to uh, pneumatic tires, like what you have in your car, and those also have disadvantages and advantages, but Without going into details, I would highly recommend using this type of wheel. This is a TPR wheel, thermoplastic rubber or thermoplasticized rubber, on a, uh, a core. This happens to be a plastic core. You can get them on all sorts of different cores. But if you've ever pushed something around on wheels, you'll find that TPR is really the best kind. It has a lot of different benefits. It is fairly soft, yet doesn't suffer from compression set as quickly as some other materials. It's resistant to impact, so you can push it over surface imperfections without it cracking. Uh, it lasts a long time in harsh environments. It's resistant to oils. It works at high and low temperatures very well. If you roll it over something like uh, debris on the floor, zip tie pieces and, stu and such, it doesn't lock up and jam like a shopping cart wheel does. It rolls over it. Not only that, but it doesn't embed inside. It, it sheds it so that you only roll over it once. So, I don't know how these are going to work in practice, but that's why I bought these wheels. And I found that I needed to get about a 4 inch wheel, I think these are, no they are 4 inch, about a 4 inch wheel so that they could support 250 pounds a piece. So that's what I got. And hopefully they work out for me. But uh, just wanted to show you these casters, and mention that if you buy casters, I'd recommend this type. I realized that my last video got a bit drawn out, maybe a little boring, so I'm going to try to avoid that in the future videos here. But I have battery number three inside the house this time. I'm doing the cycling in here because it's colder outside and I could use the heat inside anyway. But uh, in the meantime, I had done a little bit more work on battery number two. And the first time I cycled it, it was 23 minutes. The second time, 27. I did that two more times and it went up to 36 minutes. I could probably keep working on that battery and improve it even more, but 36 minutes is respectable enough. That's a significant improvement from 23. So that battery is a little bit weak. It had some sulfation issues. I recovered most of that and I'm just going to use it as it is. Now the good news is that battery number three, I just did my first cycle on battery number three, and that one lasted for 55 minutes on this 80 amp load which makes it more than 70 amp hours. And that means that this battery is well over its specifications for brand new. So this battery, battery number three, is pretty much in perfect shape, which is great news. Hopefully the rest of them are similar. The first battery was 48 minutes, and it started with a little bit of sulfation in it, so I think that one too in the next cycle would bump up to a more respectable number. Uh, not that 48 is unacceptable, I'm perfectly happy with that. But, so far, this is going pretty well. This is battery number three. I have four more batteries to go. And I'll update you as I go along. I just tested battery number four, and it also lasted 55 minutes on my 80 amp load, which is supoib. 
So it lasted just as well as battery number three, and that is extremely good. It's actually better than the brand new rating of these batteries. So I'll continue measuring battery number five, six, and seven, and see how those compare. But before I do, I need to recharge battery number four, because leaving any battery discharged for any length of time is a very, very bad thing to do. So I'm going to recharge this overnight, and once this has completed recharging, I'll move on to battery number five. I just finished load testing battery number five, and it lasted for 46 minutes. That's two minutes less than battery number one, but still respectable. Batteries three and four lasted 55 minutes, which is very good. So this one isn't in quite as good condition. I could cycle this one a couple of times and get some of that capacity back, but that's good enough for me, so I have it on my charger over here. And when that's done charging, I'll move on to battery six. I've just completed load testing and recharging the rest of these batteries. Battery number six lasted 48 minutes, seven lasted 54, but in summary, that means that I have three batteries that are nearly perfect, uh, basically at least as good as their brand new specification, three that are just about that good, and one that is nah, okay. Uh, this one is bad. Uh, it's really not usable for me. So I have seven good batteries that I can use. And now I suppose it's time to think about how to set these batteries up. So I've finished verifying that my battery bank does work. I have seven good batteries, plus one over there that is no good, so I'm not going to put that into the bank. But I have seven of them here that I've load tested, and one that I had to uh, kind of recondition a little bit. So I know that I have these batteries, and now I need to hook these up somehow. And it's a little bit difficult, I think, on these particular batteries because of the terminal arrangement. It would be much easier if they were standard with one terminal on this side and one on this side. But that's not how they are. So these batteries are actually front access ones. Uh, the model number down here, SBS100F, the F means front access. And basically they have these, uh, whatever you call them, these things that they put on the terminals to make them front access. Uh, this bolts down onto them, and then you can run your cables right out of here. And the way these batteries are intended to be used <clears throat> is in a high voltage battery bank where they're all connected up in series. So you have a strap that runs between here and here, a strap that runs between here and here, one between uh, here and here, etc. On down the line, and you'd get one high voltage battery bank all connected up in series. And that works great, but that doesn't help me because I want a 12 volt battery bank. So I need to connect positive to positive on down the line and negative to negative, negative to negative, negative to negative, which basically means that I need to have two cables coming off of each one of these terminals. And uh, here's just some cables that I made earlier uh, for a different application. I'm just going to use them for demonstration here. But, uh, so basically I need to have two cables off of each of these. This one over here, and this one over here. Let's see if I can uh, get these both on here quick. All right, something like that. Now this cable here has to bend around and connect up to positive over here. And this one here has to bend around and connect to positive on this battery. And uh, that doesn't work out very well because right here I have to put these at an angle for, uh, for me to be able to connect both of these securely. I can't put them on top of each other because they interfere. So they have to be like this. And it's also kind of a problem because I need to have a cable over here on this negative too, right? Two of them. And if this negative contacts this positive, then I'm going to have some serious arcing going on. That would short out my entire battery bank, which uh, would be pretty bad. So it's very difficult for me to hook them up this way. So I think what I'm going to do is rearrange the battery bank a little bit. And instead of having the configuration like you see here, what I'm instead going to do 
is to hook it up this way. I took every other battery and reversed its direction. And now I think I can put these cables on safely because there's nothing here to short out. So I can take cable here, go from positive to positive, no problem. Another positive to positive over here, no problem. Plenty of room. And I can do the same with negatives. So I think this is how I'm going to arrange the battery bank. It keeps everything nice and compact, and it uh, gets around that nasty shorting issue. There's really nothing left here that can short. I can put my cables across this side and across this side. So I think that's how I'm going to set this up. It also keeps the uh, bank nice and compact, so I don't have to space them apart. I like that, it's easier to store. So I think that's how I'm going to arrange this. Another note, initially to, uh, for safety reasons, they had these plastic covers that would go over the batteries. So that the terminals weren't exposed with little test holes, so you could still put your multimeter leads in and test it. Uh, but uh, I got these batteries salvaged, and most of them didn't come with those front, front access, front terminal extenders. And I only got one of these covers for eight batteries, which makes it pretty well useless. So I can't use them. I'm just going to have to leave it exposed and somehow make it safe so that if tools fall in here or something, I don't have uh, exploding batteries.